Hello, this is a new tough video, tell a friend video, on the topic, is the new normal so new? And uh, what I mean with that is that a lot of people say that we have to establish a new normal. And the new normal means uh, we define a new kind of reality, reality that us people have to accept and this implies some laws, some kind of behaviors that people have to do, you know, thinking patterns and so on. It's maybe a vaccine, vaccine. Uh, it's maybe masks, masks, you, you know. So it is something um, as seen as, you know, for one as a, for some people seen as something bad, for some people, they actually like the masks and they like vaccines, so they say, fantastic. So th this is a kind of what creates between the two different, um, you know, tribes here, the two different people create some, some friction that some like it, some don't like it. Um, and the governments will tell us what to do. Now, but uh, now if I look at... Uh, is this reality we face new? And now what do I mean with reality? Now, my reality has always been that everybody, so I, I draw a, just a normal person, lives in his reality. So he can, let's put it in green, he can change his reality and um, to a certain degree. So, for example, if some, and there are different levels. So they are very passive people. They, they do not want to, I, I put it like 0% change. They do not want to change this. Then there are these semi-active people, uh, which I would consider um, maybe, uh, you know, the passive people, they want to change nothing. And I think here they are about 80% um, that, you know, they just cope with what is there. Then the semi-active people, I may rate with something like 19 or so percent. And then the active people, I may rate, you know, with the remaining like 1%, 2% and, you know, they over. However, you know, uh, there is um, a thing, what does it mean to change reality? Now, if I am um, a very influential person, let's say I'm uh, a billionaire, you know, um, so I have like greater 10 billion, billion, I don't know how you spell 10 billion dollars or greater 100 billion dollars, um, then maybe you can change a lot of things in this reality. And how is the reality made? Well, it is we perceive, because the thing is, I, I'd like to say this perceived reality. So how we perceive the reality. That is, and the perceived is, is in many cases, it's the media, because we don't see the thing first uh, hand. You know, first hand know-how you only get from, let's say, your peers. You know, your peers. They, they give you, you know, first hand knowledge. While if you, for example, see that a lot of people die or a lot of people fight or there's a war and why do they have a war? So there is different, you know, influences, you know, so there, there may be journalists and the journalists may receive something from somewhere. Uh, then, uh, then maybe the reality has been altered because somebody paid somebody to do something and so on, then you report about that and the journalists write about it and you then perceive it. Maybe you also select that you, you view only a certain amount of, let's say, the internet. You know, it's your uh, peer group, you know, 
So it, this reality is made of a cascade of different influences. So now a billionaire obviously will be able to change all the things here. So if I look at that, so here we have the rich guy that alters, that is able to actually alter the reality for the poor people. Now the, or the non info because poor, yeah, well, in terms of money, um, but intellectually, maybe they are not poor. So that means um, the, the, the person here uh, on uh, like the normal, this would be like, uh, while I have to say that the billionaire is also a normal person when it comes to going to the toilet and eating something and so on. So it's not that he's excluded by being able to change reality. That does not mean that he actually uh, has the normal um, necessities of normal people. Um, now, the, the thing is, uh, obviously, if I'm a billionaire, then I kind of outsource the things that normal people would think about. So to go to work uh, because they have to work, look after family because there's nobody else to look after the kids, look for a house because there's nobody else and so on. So that means the billionaire also in his peer group, you know, there is which he receives as here what I mentioned firsthand, he gets in his peer groups with other billionaires, uh, that is a first hand experience he gets from them. So each peer, and this is one, one of the things I'd like to say, is each peer, each peer group, you know, has, or each, each person has his own, f um, like in his peer group, uh, first hand information. The others actually are then further away. So uh, a billionaire, for example, the, the real world life may be a little bit further away. So he's kind of not aware of what these people have to look at, except for maybe statistics and, uh, you know, big, uh, big data or big numbers. Yeah, so he just sees how much money can I make? How much profit can I make? You know, percentage in profit. That is, so that is what he does. And then on the other hand, that is what we do. So, so most of the people actually, I would rate it as kind of in the 80% range, never change something. Now, the thing is in the peer group, they might have some influence, but they kind of accept reality like it is, the working world, uh, the uh, the supermarkets, the, the choice of pro t television program or Netflix program. That is w which they just consume, so passive, which means um, con consuming, um, non-critical, non critical, which is not bad, non-critical consuming, it's not bad per se, because everybody can do whatever he wants to and w what is better and worse doesn't, doesn't make a difference. However, I, I hope it got clear that there is a big gap between, you know, where people actually um, put their effort in. Some people don't put any effort in, but a lot of people here may put some effort in, in the peer group, in the local club, in uh, whatever sports club and, and so on, there may be discussion circles and so on. So they, they are relatively influential for their peer group. Now, um, what I wanted to say is actually to talk about, is the new normal so new? I think this has been going on for, uh, I would say as long as long as humans uh, live live in uh, yeah in uh, groups, you know, let's say in uh, social in social groups, you know, something like that. Um, so this has been going on, and now the thing is, has the corona. Corona changed this. Now, what does it mean, Corona? It only means that we have to obey to certain rules by law. So that tell us to get vaccinated and wear masks and keep distance. So there is the 1.5 meters or sometimes 
two meters and don't take an airplane and don't do this, don't do that, and uh, even change our minds that we are dangerous and the kids are dangerous and all that. Uh, so it's kind of maybe this fear. So maybe a fear increase we will have. But then uh, most people have been afraid of uh, being sick, you know, sick. So the, the health thing, feeling good and so on. So that means most people actually believe in uh, there are doctors that help him. There are lawyers, lawyers that help them. There are, you know, politicians, uh, politicians. That all, you know, all these people um, do good to them. And this, this is, uh, and now what does mean good to them? Well, the doctors take a lot of money, the lawyers take a lot of money on behalf of uh, the normal people. So what has changed? I would say almost nothing has changed. The only thing may be that you are forced to wear a mask, that you might not take airplanes, trains, uh, and that you kind of get an injection uh, you know, in your uh, veins. Uh, so these two things might change. Maybe if you don't do that, you go to a jail. Maybe that is another thing. Or you go to um, some form of concentration camp where, you know, you can stay with other people that uh, actually do not want to take a mask, wear a mask and do not want to be vaccinated. So maybe that's what so you're where you live where you live you know that may be changed as well um so but uh if you look at that the big ones play with the big you know the important parts of reality or the overall parts of reality, how economy works, how the globalization works and so on. That is how they work. And we work with the small peer groups. And now there is one thing that the governments may force us to do even more by being forced. Now, up to now, you were not forced to buy processed food. You were not forced to be vaccinated. You are not forced to wear a mask and so on. Um, you are not forced that you are not allowed to assemble, uh, that you may not spend uh, time together with people. The kids were not told that they are dangerous for their grandfathers, grandmothers. So th this is one of the things that changed. Now, how big is that change? And so as a, uh, maybe as a conclusion of, of that, I would say it has changed something like plus 20% to the, and I, 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 although I don't like to rate things, you know, to evaluate to the worse, you know, worse being uh, less freedom. So freedom, freedom, sorry, freedom. Let, so, so this is one of the things after Corona, you know, we will have something like 20% less freedom. We had already a lot of, like we were forced into a reality that we would not like, a reality where there is the divide and conquer, there's the wars, and people want to sell their, you know, the influential people want to sell their stuff, the stuff being medicine, the stuff being uh, arms, the, the stuff being chemicals, and all that. So, which, which is normal, and food, and, uh, you know, they, they want to sell their, um, you know, there was uh, games and bread uh, in the old Rome, and so there's the Netflix stuff, there's the, all, all that, uh, that we are being kind of, not forced, but, uh, and, and this is one of the, the things that might change, that we have, uh, so here we, for the first time, we have a, a strict, uh, by law, you know, so th this, this may be the biggest chance, uh, change, so by law, um, that, uh, 
we are forced to do specific things. Now, I would say the passive people, they are okay because they don't care. You know, they just do what is being told. They behave, they, they don't try to kind of get rid of their chains or so on. The same I active and the active people, they might be the ones that kind of suffer. Um, so the same I active, I think they can invent that these laws have to be there and they, they just give in. Whereas the active people, I, I think those ones will be the ones that will be relatively unhappy in these new times. And so if you look at the overall picture, then you would say there's only a small percentage of things that actually change. And I would say for the majority of the population, uh, the new normal will not be that new and they will be really, really proud. You know, they will be proud that they can, f so I draw that in uh, uh, green. So they will be really, really proud that they can actually fight the the virus as the enemy. Um, so uh, th this is this is all fine. Uh, they see the world uh, like they want to see it through the media and perfect. So I would as a conclusion say uh, the new normal is the old normal just a little bit worse for some of the active and critical thinkers. That's it. Comments are most welcome. Thank you very much. Bye-bye.